Welcome to Massive Late Fee, and now your hosts, Mark and Carol. Well, hello everyone. Welcome back to Massive Late Fee. My name is Mark. With me as always is my fiancé, Carol. Hey, what's up? Not much. It's uh, March 7th, 19... 19- 98. Yeah, it's starting to become spring. It's beginning to look a lot like spring. <laughs> um, It's weird because we're not like rocketing through 1998, but I mean, it's, 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 we're already three months in. It's weird. It is. It's going way fast. I mean, before we know it, it's going to be the year 2000. <laughs> doesn't that sound like just such a futuristic thing? Like, I know it does. It doesn't seem right. It doesn't seem real. Like 2000. 2047. <laughs> Think of that. Like one day it's going to be 2047 and people are just going to be like, oh yeah, we're in the 40s. Yeah, weird. And they're going to be like, and they're going to be like, ah, see? <laughs> it's the 40s again, see? <laughs> that would be really weird if it was just on a loop. And I wonder like if everything the, just repeats itself. Right. Yeah, I know. I was just thinking, I wonder if in the 2020s there, there's going to be a huge economic collapse. And then in... Uh, Underground dance clubs. Exactly. Right, exactly. And, you know, uh, in 1919, there was that big Spanish flu pandemic. Mm-hmm. And then... God. Like, right yeah. after right after a world... Right after World War One. So, in the 20-teens, are we going to have a world war... And then a giant global pandemic. And then in the 2030s, is it going to be just like a decade of depression? And then in the 2040s, are we going to have another world war? Okay, enough. Enough. Everybody, everybody knock on wood and throw salt over your shoulders and spit on the ground and do whatever you got to do. Stop talking. (laughs) You have me all scared now. Of, Of what? The future. History doesn't repeat itself that much. You scared of the future, know. you know what they say, that's anxiety. Yeah. If you're scared of the past or whatever, I don't know. Obsessed Sad about the, the past. Obsessed with the past, that's depression. If you're scared of the future, that's anxiety. Yeah, some people are more future-oriented and some people are more past-oriented. I'm more future-oriented. I'm more past-oriented. Because I have anxiety. <laughs> but, speaking of anxiety, I'm having a little anxiety over whether or not we're going to return uh, this this dvd in time <laughs> this is so weird so like, we, we bought we bought a so i'm sorry i'm okay it's so weird go ahead i was gonna set up everything go you, ahead. you you like to rush in to things as if everyone that you're talking to knows everything that's happened in our lives i try they to don't. use the fewest amount of words possible to express an idea whereas you try to use the most amount of words possible well, that's why this tape that's why these tapes exist <laughs> i have all these words in my head and they have to go somewhere <laughs> no we bought a we bought a digital video dis- di- what's dvd stand for i don't know uh, digital video disc, I think. But we we bought a digital video disc player. We bought a DVD player. Yeah, nobody calls it that, so what the fuck? I DVD. broke down. I, w- I wanted to, to spend no more than $99 on one. But I broke down because we couldn't find one for under $99. And I, I upped it to less than $199. There you go. And we ended up getting one, which is nice. And we've been exploring some DVDs, which have some pretty cool little uh, extra stuff, behind the scenes stuff, um, audio commentary, where you like a the director and like the writer and some of the stars will sit in a room and the movie will play and you can't hear the movie because they're all like, hey, and during this scene, we were doing this. Yeah, I think that's stupid. I love it. I know. I think it's stupid. It's one of my favorite things. If I wanted to hear their thoughts about the movie, then I would talk to them. Like, I want to watch the fucking what? movie. <laughs> yeah, I'm just going to call up Steven Spielberg. <laughs> yeah, what you don't know is that Carol has every major director, star, and producer in Hollywood on <laughs> on her, her rotary dial. Or what, what do they call it? The the Speed dial? No, the, the thing. Rolodex. She's mm-hmm. got in a Rolodex. 
You make me sound like my mother. It's okay. Why? Because your because your mother has every major director. Because she has a Rolodex. Yeah, I don't go. have a Rolodex. Anyway, I have a little black book. Thank you. Oh, to you. <laughs> Who's in your little black book? Everybody. Sam Malone. <laughs> This is all your ex-boyfriends? It's my organizer. It's not really that little either. <laughs> Whose organ's not little? <laughs> you freak. No, you know what I use. I've got my, my big, like, organ. What the fuck? <laughs> you should see Where is this sentence going? <laughs> you know what I use. I've got that big. Yeah, continue. Organizer, my black uh, leather organizer that oh, has black, all huh? all the calendar leather stuff and like contacts. Wrong, but but it's big and black, huh? Yeah, that's right. It is. <laughs> yeah, weirdo. It's where I keep everybody's birthday. I know, I know, but what you've got. <laughs> but do you have your ex boyfriends in there? No. Okay. That's not, that <laughs> looks like a lie. <laughs> If you guys imagine someone's face when they're lying, <laughs> that's what Kara looks like right now. Anyway, <clears throat> why are you going to be like uh, Jerry Maguire's fiance and burn my book? Did that happen? I don't remember that in that movie. Yeah, yeah, she made a tape for his bachelor party, mm-hmm. and on it she had a, a oh, like a blowtorch yes, and his yes, little yes, black book. Yes, yes. Yeah. I'm talking about Kelly Preston. Yeah, I was thinking of uh, Lemon Face Renee Zellweger. Oh no, but you're uh, you're talking about Kelly Preston. Yeah, that's right. She burned uh, Tom Cruise's little black book yeah. with all his guys in it. I mean, girls. <laughs> Don't sue us, Tom Cruise, because of rumors. Um. Anyway, so, oh, yeah, that's what I was talking about. There's, Whoa, where there, did your mind go right there's there? This, there's this company. Uh, there's this company that just sprung up. Uh, they, and it's... We love Blockbuster. I adore Blockbuster. We used to do our Blockbuster pick of the week. It's one of my favorite places to go on a Friday night. And, but this place sends you DVDs in the mail. It's called uh, Netflix. It's ridiculous. With an X. Netflix. Don't you think that's ridiculous? What? Why... Why would anybody not want to go to the video store and pick out their movie? Like, why would you want to, like... Look at online, yeah, pick a movie, and then wait like three to five days for it to ship to you. Well, okay, so this is the deal. Yes, as you described, you go onto the computer, you can browse a listing of different movies, you can pick up to three, it depends on, like there are different... How much you pay. Yeah, there are different levels. So you pay a monthly subscription. It's a monthly subscription fee. Um... And it's cheap. It's pretty cheap. But you can get up to three DVDs at a time. There are no late fees. There, and you just, you keep them, you keep them, in, it's called a queue. That's what they call it. It's like, you know, so you queue up the movies. And if it's not available, it'll say, like, it'll go to your next movie, right? But you, um, you watch it, and then you just send them back. You put them in the little envelope that it comes in, and you send them back. And then your next movie comes. Yeah, but I don't understand it. It just seems lazy. I love it. Maybe I'm lazy. I guess so. But I love it. But we got our it's first. It's taking away my trip to the Blockbuster. First one. It's taking away my trip to the Blockbuster. Sorry. But we can, we'll still go to Blockbuster. We'll still, we'll do both. We'll Why? still do both. Because they, you can't get. When you go to Blockbuster, you can get it right away, as you as you point out. So it's not like it's not meant to be your like primary source of, of getting movies. I don't think. I just don't understand why it's my any source of getting movies. If I want to order a movie in the mail, I want to keep it. Like Columbia House, you know, they do the records, they do the movies. Like, God, you're obsessed with Columbia House. <laughs> you bring I love that up. those little stamps. Bring that up so often. It's so fun. It's way more fun than. Putting together a queue. It's a scam. Anyway, um, this is, I like it. I, I'm I'm more into emerging technologies than Carol is, but. I guess. I mean, I'm not like some old fuddy-duddy. I just, I like going to Blockbuster, and I feel like Netflix is a lazy thing. 
Okay. That's all. That's fine. You can feel that way. I do feel that way. That's And that's okay. And you can think your Q makes you happy or whatever. Uh, yes. I am part of the Q continuum. <laughs> John Lachance, or whatever his name is, is uh, my spirit guide. Okay. But speaking of spirit guides, we watched... Well, actually... I was going to, I don't know if I should, hmm. but I was going to, uh, I was going to do a little uh, massive love here. Okay. This, uh, this movie is kind of a love story. What? Between a cowboy and a dude. Okay. Don't you think? I think, no. I think that's the love story at the heart of this movie. Sure. Yeah, weirdo. <laughs> no, but a little bit of, uh, a little bit of, you know. Massive love here, guys. Carol. Yes. 20s, white couple seeking bi female 18 to 30 in northern Michigan. All replies Northern answered. Michigan. That's right. Why do these people who live in, like, other states or, like, in the fucking, you know, UP or what the fuck ever, think that we're going to, from Detroit, go have sex with them? Is that what they're... <laughs> is that... Is that- that's how you you're saying that this is this is aimed directly at you, I guess. Huh? <laughs> I just think it's weird. Well, there's nothing else to do up there. <laughs> I guess they they burned through all the single women in their little community. <laughs> Maybe, yeah. <laughs> like, hey, oh, get on your snow machine and go to over here. <laughs> Come on up here. I bet there is oh, still a lot of snow up there. Fuck yeah! Are you kidding me? A 23 year old white male, feminine. Seeking masculine white male, 25 to 40, six foot plus for discreet fun times, Troy County area. Troy County doesn't exist. Troy is a city. Yeah, that's it's in, weird. It's in Oakland County. What the fuck? I, I, he didn't want to say Oakland County. Maybe Oakland's too long of a word. I think he wants to seem rich. So yeah, I guess. He's... I'm in the Troy County area, uh, Hazel Park. Right. Um, That's a good local reference, everyone. <laughs> but... um. Yeah, a feminine man seeking a masculine man. And he's got to be older because he's 23, 25 to 40. It sounds like he has daddy issues. You think so? Mm-hmm. How about an attractive married by white male seeking an attractive white couple with a bi male in it? What about his wife? In the South Macomb area. Must be discreet. Yeah, I guess, because you're wife you asshole well you know he's bi get together like with another couple as a couple then don't go behind her back that's not nice big tall married teddy bear oh the teddy bears wants to be cuddled (laughs) by married or single female hurry it's almost time to hibernate i misunderstood that so much it's Way past time to hibernate, sir. Teddy bear, though. Like, I was thinking about, like, you know, the gay dudes. <laughs> Do you think t- gay dudes call themselves teddy bears? I think the fuzzy ones call themselves bears. Oh, my God. I've heard yes. that before. Yes, that's a so, thing. So, th- I was surprised when he was asking for a woman, because I was thinking this was going to be a bear no, asking he- for another bear <laughs> to come snuggle. But that is not what happened. No, no. He's a big, tall, married teddy bear. Well, he's a cheating asshole. Well, he wants to be cuddled, though. Just cuddled. Cuddle your wife, sir. It's almost time to hibernate, though. With your wife. I don't know what that means. Uh, Bye, white male, clean cut, shaved, all over. Hmm. Seeks male or female. Well, he's bi, so I guess that makes sense. 30 to 69. Wow. What an age. Now, is that is that is that for irony or whatever? Is that like, like why 69? Why is it like, why not 70? You're going all the way to 69. Oh, he did that on purpose. Yeah, it must be, right? But what if someone that's really 69 calls? Do you think he's going to do it just, just for the, the laughs? No. <laughs> he's shaved. Um, seeks male or female, 30 to 69, for safe fun. Much spare time. Mm-hmm. Likes You're unemployed. Likes lace. And men, too? Seeking no strings, 
no strings relationship. I don't know what that means. I think he's just describing his taste in lingerie, but I don't know. Likes lace. I'm not hip to the lingo. Me either. Uh, black male seeking black male, 40 to 50, to share the experience of happiness. <laughs> Do you, do we share the experience of happiness? I think so. I think so. I just think it's a weird way to say it. What do you think about this one? Meal companion desired. What the fuck? Some kind of weird kink thing. Handsome. P-W-M. What's that mean? Poor white male? <laughs> I don't know what P stands for. S- seeks to rendezvous with slim, attractive female for occasional lunch or dinner. No pressure. No games. Mm. This sounds like a game, sir. Right? What are you talking about? You just want to meet for lunch or dinner? Discreetly? He's tired of eating alone? I don't know. But he said discreet? Yes. That's weird. What do, what do you need to be discreet about? If you're just eating. Maybe it's the pee. Maybe it's what he's eating. Oh, God. Meal companion desired handsome PWM. Petite? C- Maybe petite white male? Uh, I don't know. Seeks to rendezvous with slim, attractive female for occasional lunch or dinner. No pressure, no games. Rendezvous. <laughs> I don't get this one. I don't know. They uh, they want to do some stuff with that food. That's what I know. Oh, that's what you think? You think yeah. it's a nine and a half week situation? Where they play that weird song? Oh, you don't, you don't remember nine and a half weeks? No. Kim Basinger, I think, and um, uh, Mickey Rooney. Mickey Rourke. Did we see it? Mickey, we Mickey see it Rooney together? would be. Mickey Rooney would be a very different movie. <laughs> no, I think it came out in the eighties or something. Like you know, it came out before we started doing these tapes. But uh, it's like they start a relationship. He like lives across the street from her. Okay. In this building, and he's constantly taking pictures of her. Oh, God. Yeah, it's fucking weird. He's, like, stalking her, essentially. But then they end up uh, getting into a relationship, and there's um, uh, this very famous scene where they, like, they've, they're they having sex, or they're about to have sex, and they're sitting in front of the, o- the her open refrigerator and just grabbing food out of there and, like, smearing it on themselves and, Ew. like, feeding each other and stuff. Like, st- like strawberries at first, but it, like, gets weird. And the entire time, this this song is playing. The, I like toast and honey. <laughs> or, like, when I like toast and jam, that's what my baby feeds me because he's my loving man. Or whatever. Like, wow. It's, it's not, like... They are totally so different. Like, what's going on in the song? It's really weird scene. Wow. Yeah. It's a weird movie. But it's supposed to be one of those, like, highly erotic movies. Because it's, it's all about their, like, they're having a, a sexual relationship. And he's, like, rough with her and stuff like that. And, like, dominating and, and everything. And it's, yeah, it's weird. It's a weird movie. It's not that sexy to me. It's one of those ones where people are like, ooh, Oh, it's such a sexy movie. And, and like I watch it and I'm like, I don't know. It just seems weird and disturbing to me. Yeah, it doesn't sound good to me. I'm a very boring sexually, I think. No, you're not. <laughs> I didn't say unskilled. I'm, I'm good. I think, you know, I, we have a... Not to get too far into anything. Oh, my. But we're happy. Okay. Um, but I like I'm not, I'm, I'm not... I don't have like kinks and stuff like that. I'm not into like <clears throat> a bunch of like... Um, like I hear about people and and stuff that that they like and like being tied up and and like that kind of stuff and it's just like I don't know. See, I, I'm glad of that because like those things just give me anxiety. It's like you got to perform. Right. I think that too much. I think if it's good, I don't think you need a, the a lot of the extra yeah. stuff to me. But anyway, um. But That's speaking of not leading needing a lot of extra stuff. We watched a uh, we watched a film here. We did. Uh, Joel and Ethan Coen um, made another movie. You may remember we we did their movie previously, Fargo. Yeah. And oh, how far they'll go! <laughs> and now they've made The Big Lebowski. 
They are interesting filmmakers. Oh, 100% interesting filmmakers. So, <laughs> this movie is really weird. <laughs> weird in a way that Fargo was not. It's similar to Fargo. I can see some of the similarities because there's a possible crime happening. Mm-hmm. And it's kidnapping again, yeah. like in Fargo. And there's a twist where it's not just a straight kidnapping. And there's inept criminals mm-hmm. all over the place. Yeah. And and that's <clears throat> that's a lot like Fargo, too. But Fargo was pretty straightforward. Dark comedy. Mm-hmm. And, you know, brutalistic a lot in, in what goes on. This is much more of just a straight comedy. A bizarre surrealistic comedy. Yes. But a straight but a straight comedy. There's no there's no real dark elements. There and there could be. We're dealing with pornography. We're dealing with a a fucking uh elderly man married to what looks like a teenage girl. <laughs> um yeah, you know, there's like there's a lot of of, of areas where you could go realistic and dark right and instead they go hyper realistic fantasy and fun oh yeah i mean there's even a scene where a dude's flying through the air oh yeah there's a couple different dream sequence type things Mm -hmm. where so jeff bridges is the main character in this movie uh his name is jeff lebowski and everyone calls him dude or the dude That's such a generic nickname. How could you claim that as a nickname? I don't know, but he has. He has manifested himself as the dude. That is all he wants to be called. And uh, his friends in this wacky situation that he's found himself in are uh, John Goodman, Dan from Roseanne, Mm -hmm. who is fantastic in this movie. Now, I, I love John Goodman. A lot. I like. I, I the first thing I ever saw him in was a movie called True Stories, um, by uh, the the lead singer of uh, the Talking Heads, um, and it's a really interesting kind of. That's another surrealistic sort of like. It's an interesting movie. It's very good, um, but uh, I saw him in that first, and I've loved him in in everything he's been in. He, he's is he's a very good actor. I think he's severely underrated. Okay. Um but he was he was fantastic in this. And then Steve Buscemi's in it, who's his other friend. They they are the three members of a bowling team. Which is Is that a normal number for a bowling team? Yeah. Three, okay. Yeah, three's no three's normal. Huh. Um but that's uh that's a big part of this movie, somehow bowling. Well, it's like the only thing that uh, the dude does. And he admits in the beginning he's a very lazy person. How does he... He doesn't have a job. He's unemployed. How does he afford his... Although I guess he's not paying his rent. Right. But... Yeah, how does he afford to live where he lives? And it's not like he's even talking about like he recently lost a job. No. It doesn't sound like he's done anything. Yeah, and he's he's always has money for white Russians and like... Yeah, oh my God, he drinks the whole movie. Oh, he drinks and he's all never drunk. the time. That's so weird. How I think you, he's drunk the entire movie. I think he's a hardcore alcoholic, so he never gets drunk anymore. He I just drinks. I think he's high most of the movie, too. Was he smoking pot? Oh, smoking pot a lot in the mm-hmm. movie, yeah. yeah. At one point, he's in uh, he's in The Big Lebowski, uh, which is what they what he refers to as the, the other Lebowski mm-hmm. that lives in this town. Who's, who's a millionaire. Who's, yeah, a rich guy <clears throat> with no leg. Well, the... the He's paralyzed. Mm -hmm. And um, he's like, hey, do you mind if I uh, light up a J in here? (laughs) But so the plot of this movie, real quick, the broad strokes. Sure. And then I guess I'll talk about what I like and don't like about the movie. And you can, too. Uh, And you can, too, at home. Uh, We just won't be able to hear you. You could always write us, though. But so the broad strokes of this movie are. There's two Jeff Lebowski's, as we said. One is Jeff Bridges. The other one is this rich dude who has a young wife who apparently owes money to a lot of people. 
they somehow these fucking morons, moron criminals or whatever, these henchmen for a pornographer that she owes money to, look up Jeff Lebowski, I guess, in the in the in the white pages and are like, oh, it's this guy. And so they go to a shitty rundown apartment right. of a guy that's supposed to be a millionaire and assume that this is the guy. Idiots. And they're like, where's the money and all this shit and everything? And, you know, your wife. And he's like, I'm not married. What are you talking about? They they jammed his head in a toilet. Yeah. It was upsetting. That was a fun. That was there is a lot of funny parts in this movie. And they're like, they keep jamming his head and they're like, where's the money? And they don't let him answer the jam. Where's the money? And then um, when they finally let him up enough, he's like, he's like, where's our money? And he's like, uh, he's like, it might be down there. Let me see again. <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> but, um, and then they piss on his rug. So, so weird. And then he's like, he's like, hey, I am not. They're like, this guy's supposed to be a millionaire. He's like, do I look like a fucking millionaire? You've got the wrong guy. Right. And so he looks it up and find, finds out there is another Jeff Lebowski, this millionaire dude. So at the bowling alley, he's telling this story to Jeff Jeff Goodman. Or Jeff, John, John Goodman. John Goodman. And John Goodman says, I can't remember his character's name. I remember yeah. Donnie because he's all, Donnie was just Steve Buscemi because John Goodman's always going, shut up, Don, Donnie. You're <laughs> out of your element, Donnie. It's hilarious. <laughs> Um, but, um, Warren, maybe is his name. I don't, I don't know. know. Anyway. So he, uh, John Goodman convinces him, convinces the dude that, Hey, um, you should go. Your rug got destroyed. Got peed on. You should go and have this dude pay for it. It's his, it's his fault. Yeah. Of course this idiot is the one that, you know, makes everything happen. Because that's a stupid idea. Right. Like, first of all, the millionaire is not responsible for what these crazy people did to his rug. Correct. And and second of all, you don't just show up at somebody's house and be like, hey, give me money. And so, but he, the guy takes the meeting. That's what I think is the funniest thing. This is a rich dude that's got a lot of stuff going on. And he takes the meeting with this vagrant right. who says, hey, somebody thought I was you and pissed on my rug. I was like, okay, I'll take the meeting. Wouldn't you kind of want more information? I guess. But Philip Seymour Hoffman, the dude from, uh, not School Ties. Although I think he is in School Ties. I think so. Um, but I was thinking of Scent Flatliners. Of a, I was thinking, yeah. And I was thinking Scent of a Woman. He's the, the fucking dick. That, Villain, yeah. Yeah, essentially. But anyway, so um, he's uh, his, the assistant, right? And I love I love his characterization mm-hmm. of this guy because he's he's so on board with calling him the dude and like and like he almost treats him like a friend. Yeah, he's like we need you, dude. You know, so like it's, I don't know. It's so it's funny the way he's professional but also ingratiating to this character yeah. that's so out of place in this element. But anyway, so um, he's he's essentially he's like fuck off. It, the the big Lebowski right. says that to him because as you pointed out he's like what does this have to do with me yeah he told me on the phone somebody thought you were me they pissed on your rug did I piss on your rug well, I'm not giving you anything right and so he leaves the meeting and Philip Seymour Hoffman's like how'd it go and he's like oh it's great he said take any rug so <laughs> so without consulting him at all they just pack up a rug for him <laughs> and he goes um and you would think that would be the end of it but. Alas, it's not. It should have been, though. There'd be no movie if it was. Right. But it this makes even less sense than him taking the original meeting. Yeah. Well, it makes sense later at the end when we, when, when we figure out what's going on. But um, so he like as he's leaving, he meets his, the young bride uh, who is... I recognize this actress, but I cannot remember her name. I don't know. She's really hot, though. I've seen her. Yeah, she is. I've seen her in a couple... A couple things, I think, but I can't remember what her name is. But she's very young, very young looking. Um, can't imagine what she's. I mean, obviously she wants the money, but like, I don't know. This guy's crippled too. Do you think he can even do anything? I don't know. Maybe he just likes having her around to look at her. I guess. But anyway, so um, well, he has to be able to do something 
Because he says he lost his his little use of his legs in Korea during the Korean War. Okay. But he has a daughter, Julianne Moore. Oh, true. Who would have been born after the 50s. Okay. The 50s, that was the Korean War. So, yeah, he's got to be able to do something. Good detective work. Thanks. <laughs> anyway, so um, don't know if he feels it or anything, but it's got to be functional. Um, Way too much thought into this man's penis, honey. <laughs> anyway. So he has a brief meeting with her and sees Peter Stormare, the uh, big, silent, fucking albino-looking dude from Fargo, who is plays a German nihilist in this one. Anyway, so he leaves. Um, then Bunny, that's her name, gets kidnapped. And they call him in, and they're like, hey, she's been kidnapped. We think... That the people that pissed on your rug are the ones that did it. We want you to take the money and be the exchange person. And then you can tell us whether or not it's them. And he's like, okay. And they're like, we'll give you $20,000. I would want money up front or, you know, at least half up front. He gets nothing yeah. up front. I'd be like, I'll do this for you, but I want some of the payment first. I I wouldn't have done it at all. I'd be like, why am I? I would have said exactly like what he did. Like, why is this my problem? And then the movie gets severely complicated. Yes. <laughs> and essentially what, what essentially the point is, is he thinks she kidnapped herself, which it turns out she both did and didn't because she wasn't kidnapped at all. Right. She just left to visit her, her sister and apparently didn't say anything. And then I don't know how everyone was able to then say, oh, we kidnapped her. Like, did they not, like, I, I did they not, like, they weren't working together, it seems like. So it's like, did they not think that that was going to blow up in their face? They just knew that she went out of town and didn't say anything. And they were like, let's pretend we kidnapped her. Like, I, I don't understand it. But anyway, um... So she's not actually kidnapped, and the people that are pretending they kidnapped her are the nihilists, which we kind of suspect the whole time, but they're not the people that pissed on his rug. The people that pissed on his rug work for the pornographer whom she owes money to, um, and they're not part of this. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, yeah, and, and so essentially... I can really uncomplicate the whole thing because it's, it's super complicated. But essentially, yeah, please do. <laughs> essentially, the the story is she was never kidnapped. They're lying. There was never any money to to get back because um, the old man was like, eh, "It's easier for not to have her, you know, around anyway," because she she's embarrassing me. She owes money all over town, all that stuff. I'm sick of having to pay for her. And everything, so it's easier for I don't want her back. Is it's essentially mm. the thing. And this dude's an idiot. Like this guy that we just met, the dude is a moron and an easy patsy. They'll think he stole the money, right? And that way, I can keep this million dollars uh, out of the f- this uh, fund that he took it out of, and no one will be the wiser. And that's the that's the plot of the movie. But everything gets super, like, complicated because Julianne Moore is the the guy's daughter and she found out about the rug that he took and it just so happened that it was a sentimental rug to her. Right. Um, her mother had given it to her father before she died and she didn't want this guy to have it. So she sent someone to beat the shit out of him <laughs> and also then decides... I want to have a baby with this man. Yeah, it's so weird. And has him get checked out by a doctor and then has sex with him to try to get fertilized. So weird. At the same time, and this is never resolved, a private detective for the family of Bunny, the girl, they're looking for her. She ran away from their little farm in Minnesota. Another Fargo reference, I guess. Yeah. And... They are looking for her, and they're trying to track her down. That's never resolved. Hmm. I wonder if she is supposed to be underage. Then 
I don't know. She came out and she did pornography, and now she's with this guy. Maybe she is underage. I don't know. That's awful. Um, but yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like we could go many dark places, but they don't. They keep yeah. it. They keep it very light. But overall, oh, and the one more thing. Sam Elliott's in this. Uh, you might know him as the guy that's got the, the cowboy that, yeah. kind of deep voice. You know, I I got that deep Texas voice. <laughs> I got a big old mustache, you know, and that that dude, right? Mm-hmm. And um, he's in the movie, and I am convinced that he is a guy watching the movie. Okay. Who just somehow happens to be able to go into the movie <laughs> and directly talk to the character in the movie. Why not? And then he directly talks to us. It's nice to know the dudes out there, you know, and everything. Like, why? Who cares? <laughs> yeah. It's so weird. It, it does. It's not nice to me. No, I don't give a shit. <laughs> and they they point out that this all happens in the early nineties mm-hmm. uh, during the first Iraq War, um, and no one knows why. Like, there's no, there's no, there's no reason for it to take place during the Persian Gulf War. It could happen at any time. Mm-hmm. But that's when it happened. Yeah. Well, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I enjoyed the movie very much. Did you? I did. It's weird. But, yeah, I, I it was fun. Yeah, here's the thing. So I guess it's kind of like a hangout movie almost. Yes. Yeah, I agree. It, it's like a that, hangout movie with, like, a very convoluted plot. Yeah, a lot like that other Hollywood hangout movie that we saw. I can't remember the name of it now. Oh, um, Swingers? Yeah. 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 Yeah, different plots, but yeah, for sure. Similar feeling at times. This is like, so the Coen brothers kind of remind me of like Quentin Tarantino movies. Mm -hmm. If Quentin Tarantino had a really irreverent sense of humor. Yeah. Which he doesn't. Like, there's even a toe. Like, yes, like some, somebody donated a toe to the cause to try to get the money to, to make it seem like that she was kidnapped. That's crazy. Yeah, I, 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 I there's no amount of money that would make me cut off my own toe. Right. Not even a million dollars. No, but uh, that she was going to share too. So the acting is good. I think the, yeah. the, like Jeff Bridges um and John Goodman especially are fantastic in the movie. Their interactions are awesome. Steve Buscemi is good too. Steve Buscemi is good, but he is a very he is a very understated like role. You know, mm-hmm. like it's like he doesn't have a he doesn't have a ton to do, but he does it well. Um, and <laughs> so the acting is a big plus. Um, the the Coen brothers know how to make a movie. And they know, like, visually the movie is fantastic. I mean, they they understand how to shoot a film. They understand how to make shots interesting. They understand camera movement and, you know, how to make everything dynamic. And, and the visual part of storytelling. Mm-hmm. And all of that is great. Um, and the script is, you know, like, the dialogue I, I liked a lot. They have a unique kind of dialogue the yes. Coen brothers um it's it's weird it's a weird movie it's very incredibly weird and there were a lot of there were a lot of times where i felt like i didn't know exactly what was happening yes or what was going on or why it was happening but it was still interesting nonetheless and like you said it was it was an enjoyable time. Yeah. I, I was entertained for the entirety of the movie. For sure. So I guess in the end, I would recommend it. Yeah. Yeah, I would definitely recommend it. Um, it's just, I mean, I wouldn't, I, I would hope you would have watched it first because I feel like it's completely spoiled at this point if you have not seen it. Yeah. <laughs> Although, honestly, I don't know that you can necessarily spoil this movie. You can spoil the, the different twists of the plot. Mm-hmm. But I think you could go into this movie knowing exactly what's going to happen and still get the same thing out of it. Maybe. 
Like, I, I don't think the mystery portion of it really matters. Okay. Because he says, like, oh, she kidnapped herself or whatever. In the back of your mind, you're kind of always like, yeah, she probably did. And then we get visual evidence that she did later. And it, it just, like, and you kind of always suspect that the nihilists are the one that did it, especially after you see him on the motorcycles. And then it's just kind of like, yeah, it does, I don't think it really matters. Okay. But it's, uh, I liked it. I, I I enjoy the Coen brothers. I think they make interesting movies. Yeah, I would like to see more from them. But uh, yeah, that is, uh, that's the movie. That's our review. <laughs> and that's the show, everyone. So you can write us at latefee1994awl.com. Yep. Check out our website at www.retrolatefee.com. Mm-hmm. And share the tape with your friends. All right, we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.